this city. And our Prime Minister did not spend... Are you James? Yeah, man. God bless you. Wait, you cut your hair? Yeah, man, I did. Our Prime Minister did not spend any money to protect the people of Toronto. So I have a special message. I am Kevin Mark Clark. I have made Canadian history. I am the first G20 arrest. I was brutally arrested on Sunday at 1.30 by the RCMP. I went to a Blue Jay game and there was a big fence and I took a left turn and my skate snapped. I stopped on a wall to take my skate off. A man in plain clothes came up behind me and he said, buddy, what are you doing? I was about to say, what do you think I'm doing? I'm taking, before I said taking my skates off, he grabbed me in the headlock. Then he tripped me over his feet and he threw me head first into the concrete. And when I tried to get up, the RCMP officer jumped on my back. And then he yanked my hands behind me. And then the RCMP officer yanked me up. And my skates were half off. And he grabbed me. I said, what are you doing? He says, you're under arrest. I said, what am I under arrest for? He says, you're under arrest. I said, what am I under arrest for? For coming in this area. And he yanked me up. And he put me to sit down on a ledge. And when I sat down on that ledge, I was thirsty and can help. And then two vans pull up. And out of it came a bunch of RCMP officers. And they said, you know, he's under arrest. He says, I said, what am I arrested for? Am I arrested for trying to take my skates off because I bust my skates? And then he says, you are under arrest for performing an indecent act. I says, what's the indecent act? He said, you were urinating. Urinate. A natural bodily function has taken a pee when your body requires it. Even if the man was urinating, does that give the RCMP ground to throw him head first into a concrete well, even if he was, now, where it happened was right by the first Canadian place. And I am giving the details to all provincial level of government, all municipal city councils, and all federal member of parliament. Above my head was a round base camera which would have caught the whole incident. Now, I am the most arrested man wrongfully by the Metro Toronto Police. And today, I must commend the law enforcement of the city of Toronto. I thought they were the worst, baddest, most brutal, unlawful cops in the world. But the Royal Canadian Mounted Police right here has shown that there is worse actions that can be committed. My issue here today is for the safety and the security of the 2.3 million people in this city that I run as a candidate to represent. $920 million have been spent to put a fence around, create jobs, and to protect 20 wannabe world leaders. But there has been zero dollars spent to protect the people of this city from the abuse of authority by those who are employed for security. And if a man could have been brutally attacked, brutally thrown head first into a concrete on an allegation that he was urinating, imagine if I was protesting, I would probably be dead. I was coming from a baseball game. What's gonna happen to the homeless people in this city? 
What's going to happen to families who don't have food for their children? What's going to happen to people who have been victim of violence? People who have been victim of abuse of authority, political abuse, police abuse. What's going to happen to those who are orphans and widows that feels that the G20 leaders should bring their issues to the table? What if they come down here on Saturday and Sunday? I'm encouraging you not to. I'm encouraging all protesters in this city not to protest at Queens Park, not to protest at Allen Gardens. I ask all leaders of protesters to take your protest to the place you can make some influence. Post Road is at Don Mills above Eglinton. It is the most expensive area in the city. And those people who organize G20 will either live on Post Road or the Bridal Path. That's where the million dollar homes are. That's where the bankers live. I ask you to take your protest to the Bridal Path and to Post Road and send a message to those who think that when you're given power, that money gives you influence. Influence comes from the love you give to all in the time of need. Power without self-control is a brutal beast. 